just to lift our heads up, make sure we're headed in that direction. All the while cultivating, developing an intense, sincere appreciation more and more towards the present. We back, baby, with another episode on the Daily Vedantic. And today's episode, this reflection, is on something that your boy struggles with all the time. Especially in, in building companies, it is so easy to slip into feasting on the future. This is a tendency that happens quite often within me and that I will just live in the future. Cheating on the present with the future. Or as Alan Watts would say, thinking about dinner while eating lunch. I remember asking Swami one time, I was in his room and I asked him um, in front of one of his attendants because he's quite quite old these days. And I said, do you have thoughts on the future? And he laughed and looked at them and looked back at me and said, I don't have thoughts on the present. That is wild. That is, uh, that is uh, a known quality of a realized soul for someone to not have any thoughts. Thoughts come from our internal tendencies that are called vasanas in this philosophy. And when you are enlightened, realized, when you have manifested the divinity already within and identified completely with that, then you have no vasanas left. Therefore, you have no thoughts. Thoughts then become desires and you don't have any desires. And to get rid of all of those, you have to get rid of your vasanas. And this philosophy makes room for any pursuit of the divine, says that there are as many paths to God as there are people on earth. But this philosophy also explicitly calls out that path of knowledge, jnana yoga, also known as Vedanta, also known as Sanatana Dharma. Sanskrit has 12 words for the same thing quite often. And Within this path, knowledge is what exhausts our desires and our thoughts and our vasanas. And when those are exhausted through knowledge, then you just don't have any. Don't have any thoughts. But if you go the other direction, you indulge in thoughts. We find ourselves, I find myself, indulging in thoughts of any and all kinds. Feasting on thoughts, but most indulgently feasting on thoughts of the future. Thinking about dinner while eating lunch. Thinking about what could potentially happen with magic mind or with our three daughters what could potentially happen in the negative sense to what to fear fear the anatomy of fear is the loss of something that we have fearing the loss of something that we have and desire that fear that can consume our thoughts and transfix our attention to where we don't even get to appreciate that which we fear we might lose. No appreciation for the lunch that is before us. Take this to its extreme and cheating on the present with the future means that we never get a present to enjoy. All of the things that we fear we might lose, we never even get to enjoy in the first place. You have them. You've got them. 
And yet you have this minuscule infinitesimal appreciation of them because we all get transfixed by the potential loss in the future. Transfixed by the future, the multiplication, the exponential multiplication of thoughts going into 360 degrees of potential outcomes. Infinite potential outcomes. Diluting us and distracting our attention from right here, right now. We're cheaters. We are cheaters. And this philosophy says that the worst part about our cheating. So we're just cheating ourselves. You have the lunch. Enjoy it. You have the present. No matter who you are, where you are, what you're doing, what you were brought up with, what might happen in the future, no matter any of those right now, you've got the present you have right now. And in the greediest of ambitions, when you really sit to think about it, how could we ever do any better? than having right now. In the infinitude of all the things that have never existed, that never will exist, that don't exist, you, the odds are so infinitesimal of existing, and yet here we are. You exist. Right here, right now. An amount of wealth and abundance of existing in the present without compare. Incomparable to any king or emperor to any individual that ever existed before. The wealth and abundance you have right now is incomparable. And yet what simple, seductive delusion removes any of our attention on any of that? It is the simple, seductive delusion of, well, this is great, but just a little bit more would be better. And that simple, seductive delusion that makes us forfeit everything we have right now, slipping into this illusory future, cheating on the present, with the future and cheating on ourselves for nothing. And I want to be clear because I imagine you might have the question of what about goals? And we have a whole episode on goals. And goals are invaluable. You got to know where you want to end up to end up there. It doesn't really happen by happenstance. Professionally, personally, spiritually. But that's 1% of the equation. 99% of the equation is then diving into the work you've got to do right before you, right now, to get there. Until there are no thoughts, by all means, we are encouraged to have thoughts of the future. For 1% of the time, just to lift our heads up, make sure we're headed in that direction all the while cultivating, developing an intense 
sincere appreciation more and more towards the present and not the delusion of the future. Not future tripping on what might happen on the downside or what could happen on the upside. 1% of the time focused on that goal and a very deliberate approach to that goal and 99% of the time focused on what is needed here and now to get there. And the more that that cultivation development on the here and now, the more of that that takes place, the more we actually recognize paradoxically the goal we have is not 10 years down the road. It's not miles away. And that's today's reflection on the Daily Vedantic. We'll see you next time. Thank you.